Hello, uh, I'm Cynthia Demise, and I am uh, proud to be the project manager for the new Pride Agenda. We thank you for joining us. Um, we are very pleased to present our fourth virtual town hall uh, with uh, New York City Census 2020. Happy for the partnership because LGBTQ plus matter, and we want to encourage you to be counted. Um, what we do at the New Pride Agenda are basically two things. We do advocacy and education. And in regard to education, early last year, we partnered with uh, the Columbia School of International Public Affairs to develop a research-based way to get more of our LGBTQ community involved in civic engagement. Civic engagement, civic pride, civic work. And this, with Census 2020, is part of our initial effort in that regard. Cecilia? Hi, hi everybody. Um, uh, we are uh, super excited to be here today. And, and as part of the, uh, the new Pride Agenda educational efforts, um, we invite you to see our COVID-19 virtual town hall series. Uh, they're really, really good though. Um, some, some of them, some of them, oh, um, some of the, sorry, some of them uh, include um, uh, webinars on wellness, homeless youth, sex, and sex workers, my favorite. Uh, visit our uh, site at www.newprideagenda.org. Um, and, and if you like what you see, uh, including today's census um, uh, show, as part of the Giving Tuesday, you can always donate. Um, consider making a donation to the new Pride Agenda and support the work that we're doing, the work that we have been doing, and the work that we will continue to do. Thank you. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Julie Menon. Uh, Julie, as many of you know, is an attorney and civic leader for over two decades of leadership in New York City, uh, both in, uh, regarding regulatory, legal work, the public sector. Um, she is director of NYC Census and has only two jobs with that, uh, two important roles. One is, of course, to make sure New York City Census receives its fair share of hundreds of billions of dollars uh, from the federal government, and of course, to fight attempts to undercount uh, immigrant and underserved communities. Um, many of you may know Julie as the former uh, community chair of uh, chair board, chair one board, board chair, chair of Manhattan Community Board one. There we go. Uh, she's, uh, what's the language? Magna cum laude, that's not me, but we're happy to have uh, Julie take it away. Thank you, Julie. Thank you so much, Cynthia, and it's great to be with you. And I really want to thank New Pride Agenda uh, for putting together this important forum. And so thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Cecilia. Thank you, Ahmed. I also want to acknowledge and thank Council Member Danny Drum, who I know um, you'll be hearing from shortly. And I want to thank my Deputy Director, Amit Baga, who will be on the panel. So I am here to talk to you about the importance of the census. And quite honestly, in this COVID world that we unfortunately are in, it's really a stark reminder about why the census is so important. Because quite frankly, it's about funding for our hospitals. It's about funding for ventilators, funding for PPE, funding for schools, for affordable housing, for transportation, for so many important programs that New Yorkers rely on. Um, and it's also about seats in Congress. So in the mid 1950s, we had a high of 43 members of Congress in New York State. We now have 27 members of Congress in New York State. So you really can see what an undercount can mean. And if we have a real undercount in 2020, we could go down to 25 members of Congress, which again, we lose representation and our voice. Um, so going to the next slide, please. Uh, one of the things that I really wanted to make sure that everyone knows is that the citizenship question is not on the census. So as Cynthia mentioned, I also have a senior role at the New York City Law Department. We were a plaintiff on the case 
along, of course, with New York Attorney General Tish James and others, and we won that case at the Supreme Court. So that is the good news. The bad news is a lot of the damage that the Trump administration um, wanted to cause with the mere sector of the citizenship question has been done and that it's caused fear and intimidation. But it, it is not on the census. The census also does not ask about your income or bank information or social security information or anything like that. And um, by law, the census is completely safe and confidential. It's protected. And so we want to make sure people know that. Um, in terms of the LGBTQ community, it's so important to know that for the first time, in the 2020 census, couples that are living together are asked to define their relationship to their partners in new ways, so same sex or opposite sex. And so that is something that is new about the census. So we wanted to make sure that we recognize that and the importance of that. And I know Amit will also talk about that in his remarks as well. Um, I want to highlight how we did in 2010. And the reason why I want to highlight that is we didn't do particularly well 10 years ago. We didn't do particularly well. And you can see these numbers on average in New York City, the self-response rate to the census was 61.9%. And you can see, for example, Brooklyn at 55.5%. And th these numbers are obviously incredibly low, particularly compared to the national average of 76%. Quite honestly, if New Yorkers had, more New Yorkers have responded in 2010 to the census, we would have been in a much better financial picture in 2020 and certainly with funding for our hospitals. So how are we doing right now? So currently 46.4% of New Yorkers have responded to the census. You can see we're 11 points behind the national average. We're the epicenter of COVID and that is really having an effect on our numbers. And so that's why it's so important to do forums like this where we make sure that everyone understand the importance. Um, New Pride Agenda thought it might be helpful if we highlighted a number of key communities. So I have these numbers up here where you can see um, particular communities and we're happy that we'll share this presentation so if that's helpful we can do that as well but just to walk through um, how some of the boroughs are doing and then you can see the comparison to the New York City number and then to the national number as well. Um, so what are we in the New York City Census Office doing about this? Well, first of all, before COVID, we launched a community-based fund where we're disseminating $19 million to 157 community groups who are really the trusted voice on the ground working in communities historically for many, many years. We also have a field campaign where we've divided the city into 245 neighborhoods and we have local neighborhood organizing census committees that people can join. Third, we have an innovative multilingual uh, messaging campaign, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then fourth, um, we have an in-depth agency and partnership engagement plan. So I'll talk about each of these. So the grant strategy, as I mentioned, um, we funded 157 community-based organizations that are working in over 80 languages and are basically spanning almost every sector from social services to healthcare, to education, to arts and culture, and much, much more. Obviously, in light of COVID, we've had to clearly suspend all door-to-door -door and events-based um, organizing, but we are still working with all of our grantees on phone banking, on textathons, on so many different ways that virtually we're able to reach New Yorkers. Um, we did want to highlight a number of our grantees that we're working with in the LGBTQ uh, population. So these are some of the groups that we're working with and we are so proud to be partnering with. Um, on the field strategy, so as I mentioned, we divided the city into 245 neighborhood organizing census committees. This is a new organizing structure that we devised last year. We have over 6,000 New Yorkers who signed up to volunteer. Before COVID, we held over 500 events in all five boroughs. And in light of COVID, we've had to switch a lot of our organizing to instead do textathons, peer-to-peer -peer texting, phone banking, so we do a lot of virtual phone banking, which is a great way to reach New Yorkers, particularly that lack access to digital. Our media strategy, so before COVID, we launched an advertising campaign. I had a numerous ethnic media roundtables. We were going to be uh, heavily advertising in the subway and buses. Uh, post COVID, we were able to pull that back, and now we've converted that into more 
funding um, for TV, for radio, and for digital. And so we have a lot of different campaigns uh, that are running right now. You might have seen some of them. So we launched a campaign with Cardi B. We have one with Alicia Keys that we just launched. And so we've got a number of different influencers who we're working with to really help to spread the word. Um, and one of the contests that we're doing now, one way that we're trying to move the needle is that we need to ensure that when we're advertising that people are actually filling out the census. So one way that we're doing that is by having a contest, and we're going to be doing this with other influencers as well. We launched the first one with Lin-Manuel Miranda, where if you fill the census out in a particular week, and then you email us to tell us that you can um, email that, that you completed the census and email us a confirmation, you're eligible to be one of five New Yorkers that receives a phone call from Lin-Manuel. So that's the contest that we're running right now. And then partnership strategies, we're partnering with the library system. Before COVID, we had set up over 300 pop-up centers, largely in the public library branches and other sites where New Yorkers, particularly who lacked access to digital, could have walked in and completed the census. Um, at some point, we'll be able to relaunch those once things um, are back up and running, but at the moment, um, we obviously are not able to utilize those sites. We're also working very closely with NYCHA to ensure that we um, have flyers. We're also giving census information at food distribution sites all around the city. We're working with over 1,000 houses of worship around the city, so we really have a lot of different um, elements to our partnership strategy. Um, how you can help. So if anyone is listening to this and they have not filled the census out, literally while I'm speaking, you could be completing the census. All you need to go do is go to my2020census.gov. You put in your name, you put in your address. It will ask you for a computer code. You do not need the computer code. That is one of the biggest misconceptions around the census is that many people feel that you need the code to fill it out. You do not. You can fill it out from anywhere, from any computer, by just going to my2020census.gov. The second thing you could do to help is to post about the census on social media. If you need content, let us know. We're happy to provide it. So it can be anything from the importance to hospitals of filling out the census or uh, you know, any kind of information you want from us, we can absolutely provide it. But putting that information on social media is vital. Sending an email blast to all of your contacts saying, have you filled out the census? At this time of COVID, where obviously so many things are out of our control, one of the biggest things we can control is filling out the census and reminding New Yorkers that it's not only about funding for hospitals and health care. The New York City Health Department utilizes census data to respond to emergencies. So for example, when there was a measles outbreak last year in parts of New York, the New York City Health Department looked at the census data to determine how many vaccines to order. So obviously, one day we fervently hope there will be a vaccine for COVID the New York City Health Department will be looking at that census data in terms of the number of vaccines. So again, this is not a time to be invisible. It's more important than ever to fill the census out. So letting all of your contacts know that is very important. You can join our efforts by signing up or volunteering and the website is up there, nyc.gov slash N-O-C-C, or help us to recruit volunteers for our phone banking and text-a-thons. These are all vital ways that you could help our efforts. And thank you. I will end there by again thanking New Pride Agenda. I so appreciate the opportunity to speak with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Um, hey, everyone. My name is Jason Walker. Uh, Julie, thank you so much for this presentation. It was, it was very helpful. Um, I'm so also elated to see uh, my former job on Native Folk in New York being very uh, active in this. Um, and New Pride Agenda, uh, at New Pride Agenda, we really um, want to make sure that, you know, our community, New Yorkers, are filling out the census. Uh, it's very important for us, especially now and during this decade. Um, so we're happy that we can hold space for our community right now to really talk about what the barriers look like so that we can overcome them and make sure our community gets out there and fill out the census. Um, I have the absolute honor of introducing someone who I consider a very dear and new friend and an inspiration to me. Uh, Ju I'm sorry, Marty Gold Cummings. I'm gonna give a quick uh, little update, a brief introduction into Marty, whose resume is very extensive and impressive. 
Um, uh, Marty grew up in Maryland, just like me, uh, and, and moved to New York at the age of 17 to pursue a career in the performing arts and has been a stunning, fabulous, fierce, and very, very um, uh, great um, a drag performer in the New York City scene and has been touring the world entertaining audiences. Uh, Marty can be seen on Fusion TV, the Shade Queens NYC, and as a regular fix on Bravo TV, um, uh, What's Happening Live. Um, Marty's uh, gift does not just stop at their performance, it also extends into their advocacy and activism. Um, Marty is also the founding president of Hell's Kitchen Democrats and has been appointed um, to community boards within their district and making sure that they can help serve New Yorkers in the best way possible for civic engagement. Um, Marty's uh, excellence also extends further into like how they show up for community and is currently sits on the board of the Ali Fournay Center and was a recipient of the Luminary Award uh, for their amazing work in supporting homeless LGBT New York youth who live in New York. Um, so with no uh, further ado, um, I think I said that right, <laughs> no longer wait to hesitation, pass it over to Marty. Uh, <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. It's always so, I'm like, oh my God, I just, yeah. Uh, good morning. <laughs> Thank you everybody for having me. This is such an important um, discussion uh, because our voices do matter and it is so important that we get counted. But before we start our Q&A, this, it, it took a lot of ask and a lot of pull to get this guest to make a video. And I don't know how we pulled this off, but we have a special message from a, a wonderful uh, artist. <laughs> Here we go. City needs us now more than ever. That's why I'm asking you to fill out the 2020 census. When more of us fill out the census, New York gets billions for services we all rely on every day, from education to housing to transportation, and yes, even health care. If we don't fill out the census, it's like we're invisible, and we've been fighting for visibility too long and too hard to allow that to happen. Now, you know, and I know, and the mayor knows, that gender is a fluid thing. And it makes absolutely no sense that the census bureau hasn't caught up yet. It's true. The question about sex has just two answers. But that is not a reason to not fill out the census. If that question doesn't apply to you, you can just move right along. You don't have to answer it. Both you and your response count and are valid. And you don't have to worry about your information being shared with anyone. By law, all responses to the census are 100% confidential and cannot be shared by the Census Bureau with anyone. Not another government agency, not the police, not the city, not even your landlord. The census takes just a few minutes, but it means billions of dollars for New York City's future. Don't leave that cash on the table. Fill out the census. Wow, thank you so much, Marty, for that amazing message. That's, that's amazing. Sorry, that was just so fun. I, I, the whole time I was like, I didn't glue my wig down in that video. I apologize, uh, New York. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, so the census is very, very important. And I am so excited because we have an incredible panel um, with us today. And I just want to introduce all of them. We have uh, Bryson Rose from the Hetrick Martin Institute. We have Amit Baga from the New York City Census. And we have Kimberly Smith from Callen Lord. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Hello. Good afternoon. Thank you guys so much for being with us today to have this important discussion. I'm very happy you guys are here. Um, if everybody can just go around and quickly introduce themselves and, and what they, they do. We'll start with uh, Kimberly. Hi there. Uh, my name is Kimberly Smith. Um, I'm the Senior Director for Community Health Planning and Policy at Callen Lord Community Health Center. Uh, Callen Lord, if you don't know, is a federally qualified uh, community health center that primarily serves LGBTQ folks in New York City and beyond, regardless of ability to pay. And I uh, use she, her, and hers pronouns. Hi, 
All right, Mr. Rose, we'll go to you next. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bryson Rose. The pronouns I use are he, him, and his. I am the Director of Advocacy and Capacity Building at the Hedger Martin Institute, the nation's oldest and largest nonprofit serving LGBTQ young people and their families. And I am so excited to be here. And uh, Amit? Thank you so much, uh, Marty, and New Pride Agenda. Uh, I'm Amit Asbaga. I'm the Deputy Director of NYC Census 2020, which is the Mayor's Census Office. Uh, thrilled to be here today. I use he, him, his, um, and very happy to join a panel um, that's such a distinguished panel. And I also am so honored to announce that we have the incredible uh, council member, uh, city council member, uh, Daniel Drum is joining us as well on this panel. Hello, council member. Hi, Marty. How are you? It's so great to see you. And what a wonderful uh, show that was. <clears throat> uh, I'm glad to be here. I'm New York City Council member, Danny Drum, and I represent Jackson Heights and Elmhurst in the New York City Council. I'm the chair of the finance committee. And um, I just want to stress to everyone how important it is to fill out this uh, census. So I'm looking forward to uh, this uh, discussion. Thank you for having me. Thank you, I'm happy uh, you all are here. And before we dive into the questions, I just wanna reiterate to everybody that the census is easy, safe, and important. Super easy, 10 questions under 10 minutes. You can go to my2020census.gov or call 1-800-344-2020 to fill it out. There's no unique code or mailer need it, just your address. It's safe. Census information is 100% confidential and it cannot be shared by the Census Bureau with anyone, not with immigration, not with law enforcement, not the city, not even your landlord. So it's super safe, super secure, and it's very important because census data determines annual distribution across states of $1 trillion in funding for education, healthcare, housing, transportation, job training, and more. This is super, super important. We absolutely must fill out our census so we get the things we need. Okay, hey, hey. let's dive right in. Um, Okay, we just covered this, but you guys, why, why in particular is the census, why does it matter? Why does it matter so much? I'll, I'll ask Amit that since you're on the census, uh, you're working for the census. Sure. Um, well, I think you actually laid out very compellingly a lot of the reasons why the census matters so much. Um, it really does determine the way in which New York City can build its future for the next 10 years. Um, I would say personally, if I had to give a personal perspective as an LGBTQ New Yorker, uh, to me, the census really matters and makes a difference because our collective fight um, in the LGBTQ community has been about existence, has been about visibility, has been about representation. Uh, this is a fight that you know our community knows, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, more intimately um, than many others. And so it really is, from my perspective, critical that we show up in the census figures, because if we don't, when it comes to representation at every level of government, from the council to the state legislature, all the way up to Congress, uh, if we don't show up, it's as if that we don't exist. And, you know, we're here, we're queer, uh, and uh, the Census Bureau needs to know that. So there you go. Thanks. Um, and, you know, we were, we were, uh, when listing all this stuff, we talked about how, how funds are allocated in terms of healthcare and education. And so I wanna ask um, uh, uh, Bryson, who works at HMI, what is that, that uh, distribution money? How does that impact uh, organizations like yours and Kimberly working at Cal and Lord and in healthcare, how, how does that uh, distributed uh, money from the census uh, help organizations like yours as well? Yeah, that's a great question. So thinking about how uh, we get funds to provide a lot of the, the, the services and uh, things that young people need they're not getting in their communities already in a safe uh, and affirming way. So oftentimes people um, assume that uh, because there's hyper visibility in the media that uh, that translates into uh, safety for our young people, um, but that doesn't, that's not always the case. And so they're able to come to HMI and get some of the things that they need like job training, which we know for a lot of young people uh, effective and affirming and immersive job training is path dependent, meaning that when they are younger, if they're working, uh, they're more likely to work and have continual and stable employment as they get older. So we know that funding for our programs isn't just sort of about the immediate, it's also about the long term, but because we're building the foundation for young people to get the experiences and things they need. Great. And Kimberly, what about with organizations like Cal and Lord? You guys do such uh, vital service for the, the community in terms of healthcare. 
Yeah, thank you. And thanks for having me, uh, New Pride Agenda. Um, I would just add that, you know, we don't often think about the LGBTQ community as relying on uh, social service programs. And in fact, uh, we, our communities rely on social service programs provided by the government as they should be disproportionately. And so for example, Medicaid, 21% of LGBTQ communities rely on Medicaid. Uh, and at, uh, we at Cal and Lord, we serve a range of people regardless of ability to pay, as I mentioned, including those who are on, use public insurance like, uh, like Medicaid. So filling out the census really um, you know, enables the government to apportion the funding appropriately and make sure that people have what they need. We also, you know, uh, LGBTQ communities uh, use uh, uh, food assistance, SNAP, um, we use federal housing programs and related services. So uh, I think we, we you need to kind of put the LGBTQ lens on why it's so important uh, to fill out the census. Um, uh, and you know, we are represented, even though we can't kind of, uh, the census doesn't allow us to reflect who we feel like we may really be and in terms of our identity. Uh, we obviously are part of all these sectors and use these services. And so it's, uh, it's super important that folks um, complete the sentence. Census, uh, not the sentence. <laughs> and I, and I want to ask um, uh, Council Member Drum, um, what are the potential repercussions of not filling out the census with respect to our elected representation? Um, before I start on that question, I just want to welcome, I understand it, my friend from Northern Ireland, Council Member Seamus DeFoyt. I probably said his last name wrong, but uh, he's joined us all the way from Belfast. So welcome. And uh, they also are going to be going through a count soon. But, um, you know, if uh, we don't have the uh, correct number of people who are living in New York City, it shortchanges us in federal dollars, in particular state dollars as well, because all of that is based on the number of people provide in certain districts. Uh, you know, the last census, uh, my neighborhood, Jackson Heights and Elmhurst, uh, we believe was tremendously undercounted. And so here we are in the middle of going through the COVID crisis, and we're depending on federal bailout money to help us get through this crisis. And, uh, you know, we're meeting a lot of resistance from the federal government in that regard. Uh, so if we don't have an accurate count of people who live in communities like mine, uh, then we're not going to be able to get those federal dollars. So that short changes us with the New York City Council budget. And I know both Cal and Lord and also the Ali Porne Center um, are dependent upon funds from the city council. So if we have to make cuts to the city council budget, uh, then those organizations will also face shortages. So LGBT, LGBT people are very important in this census count. That's how we um, help our LGBT institutions. And institutions within the LGBT community are really important. It's one thing to be visible and to have elected officials, but it's another thing to make sure that we build institutions within our communities to help those who live there. And um, we can't stress that enough, that all of that depends on funding from the state and from the federal government down to the city government when we disperse it out to those types of organizations. Very, very important. Uh, thank you, Council Member. Yeah, I wanted to, to you know, talk about the statewide importance, you know, what you touched on uh, there. Um, the, the impact of that. So if you could um, help us understand even more uh, outside of like a city perspective, the statewide impact of the census. Absolutely. Great question. Thank you. So as council member Danny Drum mentioned, uh, there are implications both for funding as well as for representation. So when we're thinking about uh, New York City's representation in Albany and also New York City's and New York State's representation in Washington, the census has a real impact. Uh, I'll start with the first point. The, um, when it comes to the number of seats that New York City has in the State Assembly and the State Senate in Albany, if we are undercounted relative to the rest of the state, that means we are going to lose representation in Albany relative to the rest of the state. Uh, we know that this is you know, very, very important because New York City obviously has um, some key priorities uh, and key issues that are, at, are regulated at the state level, and it's really important that we are fully represented. Um, statewide, if we have an undercount statewide, which would which could potentially be brought down by any part of the state, uh, including New York City, 
Um, what we are facing next year is potentially a very dire circumstance, which uh, Julie alluded to earlier in her comments, which is that we could lose up to two seats in Congress as a result of an undercount. Uh, now, this is really concerning to us uh, for a whole variety of reasons. Uh, when we look at the political landscape uh, of Washington, D.C. today and the national political landscape, uh, we know that we need as many people as possible who are fighting on our behalf, fighting for our priorities, fighting to ensure that New York City gets its fair share, not only of funding, but also that uh, really key issues that are regulated at the federal level uh, continue to be worked on by the people who represent us, who support us, and who believe in us, right? Um, I'll give a quick example, which is, you know, uh, this is going back a couple of years, uh, but the Ryan White Care Act, which was originally passed in 1990 after a tremendous amount of advocacy by the LGBTQ community in response to the AIDS crisis, uh, and this act provides, tens of mil provides for the federal government uh, allocating tens of millions of dollars a year for HIV, uh, prevention and treatment, it's education. Um, this particular uh, bill, which you would think, this particular law, which you would think has long been a settled issue, uh, actually has been the subject of political manipulation by Republicans in Congress for many years. And so despite essentially being a 30-year-old law, we're constantly having to fight to ensure that it is renewed time and again, uh, which this is a perfect example of why New York City needs to ensure that it has uh, complete and accurate representation in Congress and why it really matters to LGBTQ communities. Final quick point on this, uh, as many folks know, uh, a lot of the decisions about how the COVID response is being funded, um, you know, what types of businesses are getting support, what types of individuals and families are getting support, um, all of those decisions are being made in Congress. So if New York City is not fully represented in Congress, we're going to get shortchanged. So fill out your census. Thank you so much for that. Um, and I want to ask, you know, I, I do a lot of work with, with uh, Hetrick Martin Institute. I think they're an incredible uh, organization. I love their after school meals program uh, for the, the kids. It's really great. And uh, I, want to, I want to ask you, um, Bryson, how the, just to emphasize the importance of the, the census uh, in, in the age of COVID-19, you know, how, like when we're in a crisis like this, how are your services able to be rendered? How are we able to help the young people of programs like yours? Um, uh, so yeah, I just wanna I just wanna um, ask you about that. You just said a word, amen. Um, so we have mobilized really quickly. We have offered um, lots of different resources to young people. We were able to mobilize very quickly and offer tablets so that we could continue to for our young people who are involved in our free long term mental health counseling um, to stay connected to a counselor. Um, lots of young people are trapped in spaces that aren't affirming or safe for them to be their full selves. So they're having to navigate not only a pandemic, but also maybe trans antagonism, homo antagonism from families or cared ones, or a space where they're sharing where it's not safe. We've been able to maintain um, our internships program. So we have over 70 young people still earning a paycheck during this time because we were able to go digital with our uh, work that we do. So we're hosting groups, um, young people are hosting their own conversations about COVID and how to take stay, uh, stay safe. They made a really cute how to make your own homemade um, hand sanitizer and masks. Uh, and so it's really important that these funds uh, that are allocated to help communities are also coming, that, that we're counting so that uh, in times like this, but also in other times, uh, just generally speaking, that those who are most marginalized or ha you know, have access to the things they need to transition from early adolescence to later adolescence to early adulthood with dignity and pride and power. Well, I'm so happy to hear that you guys are doing all that great work still. It's such an incredible organization. Um, and I wanna ask uh, Kimberly about, um, you know, we talked about uh, how, how census funding is so important in terms of scientific and, scientific and medical research, emergency services, vaccines, and, and uh, how are, how are, uh, you know, how is this, this funding going to help an organization like Callan Lord in the work you guys are doing? Uh, well, quite literally, it, it will help us stay afloat and serve our communities the way, you know, with quality, competent, uh, non-judgmental health care. Uh, I mean, right, we are fighting in this COVID uh, environment uh, for funding from Congress um, because, you know, they're kind of uh, dispensing money for community health centers and dribs and drabs and it's just quite honestly not enough to uh, to, to, to maintain without 
uh, eventually maybe having to furlough or lay off uh, providers. Um, so it's really quite literally uh, an issue of our survival, um, uh, not just with uh, uh, federal funding, but with state and local funding as uh, the council member mentioned. So I think the census is just a way of making the invisible visible, just like we do and with our programs. Uh, and it's a way to uh, speak up and out, even though it's not perfect. And I, I want to acknowledge the frustration uh, of, you know, I already filled out my census and it's, it, it is frustrating, you know, that they're, they're just two questions around gender identity. There's a question about uh, marital status, uh, which is, um, you know, that's, that's some progress, um, but we have to kind of make it work in order to, to be seen and heard. It's really about respect, uh, about representation, and about uh, power. Absolutely. This, you know, our voices matter. We're a, a huge, huge part of the population, so it's so important for us to be um, count it. And I want to ask uh, Councilmember Drum, you're a veteran in New York City government. You're one of my heroes, and I, I, I look up to you so much. And uh, uh, so thank you for everything you've done in government. And I want to I want to ask, um, uh, can you speak to how much progress, even though it might not be perfect, that we as a community um, have made regarding being seen? Sure. I mean, you know, back in the day when I was um, 17 years old, I never dreamed that we would have a Cal Law or a Hetrick Martin Institute. I thought I was the only gay person in the world in those days, you know, and uh, the only thing that I had seen on television was a negative stereotype of who we are as LGBTQ plus people. And so, um, you know, building those institutions, coming out and being visible, and of course, as has been said already, being visible means filling out our census um, application is a part of that being visible is vitally important to the movement. It's been mentioned before as well about the congressional seats, but also state elected seats and city council seats are um, drawn up based on the census. So uh, council seats in particular, I wanna talk about, because I'm most familiar with that, is to they're drawn up and they have to be racially balanced. So if we have, if we don't have people of color and if we don't have LGBT people filling out those census, we're going to get warped districts that are predominantly one way or the other. And so um, having that visibility, although it's not perfect in certain districts, is really important to the future of the city of New York. Um, for example, I believe the next person taking my seat will be a person of color, uh, and that's because of the way that the districts were drawn back in 2012. And now that's going to affect the next group of council members coming into the city council. So um, that's vitally important as well to our community. Sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, and Amit, I, can you speak to the intersection of immigration and the census? Absolutely. Thank you. Great question. Uh, so as Julie mentioned in her remarks right at the top, there was this protracted conversation around whether or not there would be a citizenship question or an immigration question on the census this year. Uh, you know, we're thrilled to share that through the efforts of the city of New York, along with many other cities and states across the country, uh, and Attorney General T Tish James, we were successful in defeating the citizenship question uh, and getting it kicked off the census. We won against the Trump administration and the Supreme Court. But that protracted conversation really did uh, create a lot of confusion and res has resulted in a tremendous amount of misinformation and disinformation uh, in terms of the citizenship question and the census. To be very clear, there is no citizenship question on the census. There are no questions about immigration. It does not matter what your immigration status is, whether you're documented, undocumented, whether you're a green card holder, whether you are simply here on a tourist visa, um, you should be participating in the census if you are living in New York City, living in the United States. Uh, the census uh, does not ask these questions. And also, just as a quick reminder, all information provided to the Census Bureau is completely confidential. It's protected by one of the strongest federal privacy laws in the books, Title 13. The penalty for breaking this law is $250,000. 
and five years in jail. So there's a real incentive for Census Bureau employees to comply with this law. Uh, since this law was passed in the early 1950s, it's never been broken. So, you know, we really want to get that message out there and we really want to emphasize um, it really does not matter what your status is. Uh, you, the census is for you uh, and the census is completely safe to participate in. And, and one final quick point on this, um, you know, I think oftentimes the conversation around LGBTQ issues or LGBTQ identity challenges uh, and immigration is not one that is at the forefront of uh, our collective consciousness. And it is something I want to raise just to say that there are millions of people in the United States who are LGBTQ immigrants, um, and they face a whole variety of specific challenges. You know, we talk about intersectionality. When you layer onto that, uh, potentially being someone who is undocumented or having uh, a status that is not permanent, um, it really creates a very distinct uh, vulnerability for those individuals. And so, you know, we are, part we are particularly mindful in sharing with LGBTQ immigrants uh, the census is absolutely safe and it is for you and it is your way to be seen, heard, uh, and represented. Awesome. Thank you so much. And before we uh, uh, before we wrap this um, part of the, the Q&A up, I just want to know, are there any uh, last minute comments from, from any of you uh, about the census or the, the work you're doing? Kimberly? Yeah, I just wanted to um, plug my friends, our friends at Aperture, who are working uh, hard to help people uh, fill out the, uh, the census. Um, and so Aperture actually uh, will help you literally fill out the form. Um, and you can call them if you have any questions about the census or if you need help completing the form uh, at 1 866 274 2429. That's 1 866 274 2429. Um, so I just wanted to make sure we plug, we work a lot with that Aperture, we love Aperture, and I want to make sure they, they got a little plug there. Awesome, thank you. Um, anybody else, uh, final last minute comments? Cool, all right, I just want to say uh, thank you so much um, to our incredible uh, panelists who are here today. Thank you, Bryson Rose from Hedrick Martin Institute, uh, Kimberly Smith from Callan Lord, Amit Baga uh, from the census, and Danny Drum, uh, one of our incredible uh, city council members in New York. And uh, thank you to the New Pride Agenda for putting this on. And I just also, um, like somebody uh, mentioned earlier, if you were financially able to contribute to organizations like the New Pride Agenda or Cal and Lord or the Hetrick Martin Institute, it is so important that we help these organizations who really, in a time of crisis like we're going through now, need our help now more than ever. Our, our LGBTQ community um, uh, needs support through this. So in addition to taking the census, if you're able to give a dollar uh, to these groups, please do. And um, thank you guys so much uh, for, for being a part of this. And I want to now uh, welcome uh, Ahmed Mohammed uh, to, to take it away. Thank you, Marty. Thank you, panelists, for that great discussion. Um, my name is Ahmed Mohammed, as Marty just said, a community organizer with the New Pride Agenda. Before we go to closing remarks, we made this cute little PSA video as a board and staff, and I'd like to share that with you guys. Um, so here goes nothing. Hi, I'm Cynthia Demise, the project manager of the New Pride Agenda. And in honor of our partnership with Census 2020, we thought we'd ask a few board members and staff to fill out the 12 survey questions. Okay, I'm starting with question number one. Question number one. How many people are living or staying in this house, apartment, or mobile home as of April 1, 2020? Mama, it's 2020. Don't use the typewriter. The census is online. I finally started to fill out my census form. Finally getting around to it. And I'm on like the second question. And they want to know if there are any additional people who live in my apartment. Now, there are no other people who live in my apartment, but I live with my most adorable cat. How adorable could a kitty cat be? Shouldn't she be counted? I don't quite understand it, but no, my cat does not count as a member of my household. People only. Oh well. Census question three is about home ownership, a measure of our nation's economy. 
Lord knows we'd love to be living for free here in Brooklyn, but no such luck. Please answer the census. What's up, Jason? What are you doing? You know, just sitting here filling out the census, doing my civic duty. Oh, what question are you on? Well, I'm on question number four, which happens to be my favorite number and often most asked question. What's my phone number? <laughs> Hi, I'm Doug Worth, member of the New Pride Agenda's Board of Directors. Welcome to my home. Do you pay rent where you live? Because if you do, then you count. Census 2020 is happening right now. Come out, be counted. Okay. Question number six is, what's one's sex? I wish they would call it gender, and I wish they would give us many, many possibilities. Check this out. So, if you identify as male or female, which uh, those are the only binary choices that they're giving us, check one of those and keep going to number seven. But if you don't, please, don't feel discouraged. You can skip this question and go to the next one. Your census will still be counted and it will actually be making a statement of how incomplete this is. Okay, question number seven. What is person one's age and what is person one's date of birth? But I got this one. Two, fourteen, blah, 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 blah. Hello, I'm Victor and I was just reminded by my MPA board that I need to fill out the census, which I could easily do online. So let's see here. Question number eight. Is Victor of Hispanic, Latino, or Spanish origin? Yes, I'm proud of it. Hey guys. Hey guys, I'm Ed here. I'm also filling out the census and I got question number nine, which asks us to identify what race we are, checking all that apply. Easy, I'm African American. I'm back and answering question number 10, which asked me to print the name of the next person in the household. My roommate. Hi, it's Sarah. I'm at my house in the east end of Warren. He's staying with me uh, to try and ride out the pandemic. I'm trying to respond online to the 2020 census, and they're using up all my bandwidth, and I can't seem to finish the census online. What's a girl to do? Should I send them back to New York City? Hello, everyone. I'm Joe Presley, and I'm a board member of the New Pride Agenda. I get to talk to you about question 12 on Census 2020. I'm very excited about that because it talks about marriage. In 2011, I was so ecstatic because I finally got a ring put on it and was able to marry my husband. And so in 2020 Census, in Census 2020, I was able to report on that, which just sent me to the moon. So join me, not only about excitement for question 12, but about all of it. Be part of history and let's get counted, folks. Get out there, fill out the census. All right. I did it. Three people. Myself, my wife, and my daughter. Good job, Mama. So easy. You two can do it. All righty. Hey. Thank you, guys. And so I think the takeaway is if the adorable kitty is excited to fill out the census, you guys have no excuses, right? So we all have to be on this together. It's all about visibility and being counted. Um, and I want to pass it off to Cynthia before we sign off. Uh... Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Census 2020, for your wonderful partnership, Julie. I met the entire team. Thank you, Kimberly, Bryson, uh, my dear friend, Danny Drum, uh, Marty, for your charming uh, willingness to be our host. Thank you so much. Um, just want to give you a heads up. Uh, the next in our virtual town hall series will be back to Thursday evenings. So next Thursday, May 14th, 7 to 8.15, we're gonna focus on mental health stresses uh, related to COVID-19. We have uh, Kelsey Louie from GMHC being our host facilitator and a, a wonderful panelist. So please, um, again, go to www.newprideagenda.org. We're not big, we're just a little startup. We appreciate, you. We appreciate any input and comments you have um, and um, we're, we're working here for you. Cecilia. Yes, I'm, I'm so excited for the next one. I think that, you know, with all this COVID-19 situation, you know, many of us are really going through a hard time with our mental health. So it's something that is going to be very good 
to just um, take a part on so we can all um, kind of learn what is our best, best practices to go through this uh, challenging time. So don't forget to uh, chime in and the, and the next one, which is March 14 at 7 p.m. And most importantly, do not forget to fill out the census. I'm telling you, it was super, super simple. And I have to go again and tell you, like, I guess this was much more completed and that uh, we couldn't add uh, different genders or like the race question was a little bit limited too for me because I mix it. So, but anyways, I just push through and finish it because I want to make myself counted because I know that when I make myself counted, the city gets more money, the state gets more money, and God knows we need it. So please don't forget to fill out the census. LGBTQ matters, stand up and be counted. On behalf of the new Pride Agenda, we really wanna thank you for being here today. Thank you to all our panelists. Thank you to you especially for being here, taking part of this census and uh, town hall and, and meeting. And um, just don't stop, we, we have so much to do. And if you have time and you have a coin, drop it. Drop it to Colin Lord, drop it to Hedrick Martin, uh, drop it to the new Pride Agenda. So. Only if you have it though. If you don't have it, drop a coin. We all need it. So thank you so much. And please stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great day. Bye.